Hi, American War students. It's so good to see you. Well, I know I really can't see you, but I know you're out there. And I really can kind of see you in my mind. I'm thinking about all of you and hoping that you and your families are doing okay. And I hope you are finding time to read something every day. If you are listening to this message right now, then I know you have access to the internet. You may already know that many online companies and businesses and book publishers are allowing students and parents, caregivers and teachers to use their online resources for free right now. Yep, free. Since we don't know how long this free stuff is going to last, we should take advantage of as many of them as we can right now. If you need help finding good things to read online or you're having trouble getting to the sites, please do not hesitate to email me. You can find my email information on the Merrick Moore website. If you want to chat on the phone, send your phone number and a good time to call. Send it in an email and I will try to get back to you just as fast as I can. Let's stay connected. You know, I was thinking about all the online resources that are available to all of us. And I wonder if you're feeling as overwhelmed as I am. It's good to try new things and search out new experiences, but sometimes it's comforting to know that some of your favorite websites are exactly where you can find them. Yep, I'm talking about the sites that are posted on the Merrick Moore Media Center homepage, the Destiny page. Let's take a few minutes to look at that page and review some of the cool topics that are there. All righty. Remember that to get to the Destiny homepage, you access the Merrick Moore website, you go to Students, and then you click on Destiny. Then, of course, you know you have to scroll down and click on Merrick Moore. And you come to the website there, or the homepage, I'm sorry, the homepage. Now, past few days, I've been checking out each one of these sites, and all of them worked. Now, having said that, you know, just like at school, sometimes I say they work, and when you click on them, you say, Ms. Beckroth, I can't get in. Don't get frustrated. If you can't get in, just find something else to look for. All right, let's, um, let's take a look at some of these. And uh, there are a few new things here, and I did take some things off, the things that weren't working. But just to refresh your memory, let's take a look. All right, starting up here on the left, it says Academic Fun, the Turtle Games. Remember, there's all kinds of games to play in there, but academic, remember, it's learning something. It's math or science or English or social studies or something like that, but there are a lot of fun things to do. Here we have the authors. Um, we're going to come back to those at the end, so we're just going to skip over those right now. The Black History Resource, uh, Black History Resources, remember that we had read the book about the man who was the architect for this Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C. So you might want to click in there and take a look around. Um, the chess games are, the chess sites are still there. The Chinese Zodiac and the Zodiac Animals, some of you might want to go back and visit that. Fifth graders, we were uh, starting on our coding. Um, I left a couple of those sites up there. Coding is something I'm going to be practicing with whenever um, I have a minute here at home, so I may be adding to that. Next up are the cooking sites that we uh, put there. You might remember you love, so many students love those fruit projects. All right. Remember that a lot of the YouTube things have the um, advertisements. We just have to kind of wait and skip through. Remember the, the melon? All right. We're not going to listen to that. Whoops. Whoops, 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 whoops. There we go. All right, we're not going to listen. But again, they're all those, I, I love those things, and I know you do too. So you just, now that you're home, maybe you'll have a chance to practice some of them. All right. Over here, we have the Greek mythology. I need to figure out how to get rid of this, don't I? Oh, there we go. There we go. All right. Some Greek mythology sites. The History for Kids um, is, a, um, if you like history, that's for you. The Internet Safety, remember the Google Innerland. You might remember now that you just take a look at this. Remember that? It teaches you about Internet Safety. 
but it also has some cool games to play. All right, up here on the second column, you have all those typing games. Now might be a really good time to start practicing or continue practicing your typing. All these things, all these sites here. All right, the library games, we haven't talked too much about those this year. They were on there last year, and some of you enjoyed those, just talking. Um, those, those of you who are bibliophiles, remember, lover of books, you might be interested in playing some of those games. This Library of Congress, um, we talked briefly about that in one of the, um, uh, in the fifth grade classes. Um, the Library of Congress is in um, Washington, D.C., and it is the People's Library. Library. There are a lot, let's just click on that. There are lots of things. Now, this site doesn't look real exciting because it's for everybody. It's for kids and adults. And you, know, you can scroll down if you want. But you can also go up here in the search bar. And when you start writing children in here, because I like oh, stories, books, book selections, poetry, literature, all kinds of things. So you could click on some of that and maybe find something that interests you. All right. Down here we have the Sports Illustrated for Kids. Remember that's up to date, it's current stuff. And then the news and current events. If you're interested in science and social studies, again, current events means it's happening now. Let's click on this time for kids. And remember the time is capitalized because it's a magazine. Uh, let's see if it's going to come up. Hmm. I feel like I'm at school. All right, there we go. Oh, look at that. I'd like to be right there. Although I'm not really a kayaker. Look over here, news from our readers. April 1, this is really timely. Now, for, before we look at that, over here it says April 17. Hey, wait, how can it be April 17 when it's only April 2 right now? Okay, well, because remember I told you that the magazines are published um, in advance, they're published, but they're dated in advance. So that lets you know, though, that this is really current. It says April 1, 2000, uh, 2020. What are your thoughts, feelings, and opinions about the global coronavirus emergency? We asked our readers to let us know. Let's take a look at that. All righty. What are your thoughts? Uh-oh. These are kids that are writing. From Eva in Nashville, Tennessee, age eight. I am wondering what children my age are doing for fun since they can't go to school or go on field trips. I like to make art. Oh, Miss Anderson would like to hear that. And hope the new coronavirus stops spreading. My family has been at home for over two weeks and we do a lot of reading, playing games, and making art. All right. Miss Deckroth, why are you showing me this? Well, here's somebody from Virginia. Michigan, New York, but down here at the bottom, kids, ask a parent or guardian if you can tell us about your experience during this time. If so, have them email us at, and there's the email address, your response might be featured on this page or in an upcoming issue. So you might have a comment that you want to make, put it in writing, ask somebody to send it out. So. And that's on the new sites there. Here's your North Carolina sites. Many of you like the hang the hang mouse sites or the, you know, taking a look around the state and learning about North Carolina. Here's the United States stuff. And then travel. You see Google Earth down there. You guys really enjoyed that. All right. One last thing. Let's go back to these authors. Now you're going to notice that I added a whole bunch of authors there. Dave, uh, Dave Pilkey. You remember him. He's um, Captain Underpants and Dogman. Here's a new one, Eric Velasquez. Jeff Kinney, that's um, Wimpy Kid. Kelly Starlin Lyons, she's the one, remember we read, read that book? She's the one that wrote the book about Philip Freelon, who lived in Durham for, um, for, for a time. And he's the one that was the architect of that museum that we just took a look at. So you might want to take a look at her books. Okay, here's another one, Kwame Alexander. You might say, Ms. Decker, I don't really recognize these authors, but if you take the time to click on them and look at the book covers, the book titles, you will know who they are. I love the way this man looks. He's just so funny. 
All right, so we scroll down a little bit, and we're going to do, I want About Me, Biography, Fun, Kid-Friendly Bio, Short Bio, and a Super Short Bio. This man has a sense of humor. Let's take a look at this one. Kwame Alexander has written 32 books, three of them in a chair next to a fireplace at his neighborhood, Panera Bread. That's a local restaurant. He now writes in a studio he built a few years ago. It has huge windows, a large picture painting of John Coltrane, who was a singer, 3,000 books, heated floors, a blue couch, and a loft, which was Randy's idea. Now, we don't know who Randy is right now, but we'll find out. When he's not writing, Kwame's watching reruns of Everybody Hates Chris with his soon-to-be six-feet-tall middle school daughter, six feet tall, reading manuscripts for Versify, the publishing company he founded, and traveling to schools and libraries across the globe with his best friend, singer-songwriter, guitarist, chicken Caesar salad enthusiast, Randy Preston. So that must be the Randy that he was talking about up there. Kwame has, in, Kwame has eaten snails, chocolate-covered bugs, and grass cutter, which is like a big rat. Ooh which he had no idea he was eating because it was in a really tasty stew he ate in Ghana while building a library and a health clinic in a village called Konko. He's never eaten frogs, but he has written a book about them called Surf's Up. I don't think we have that in the library, but I'm going to make sure I order it. And some other books you may have heard of, like The Crossover and Swing and The Undefeated and Out of Wonder, all New York Times bestsellers, which his dad likes to brag about, in grocery stores and doctor's offices. Kwame loves jazz. Kwame loves his family. Kwame loves his job. Kwame's job is to change the world one word at a time. I love that. Oh yeah, he also won the Newberry Medal. You might remember we talked about the Newberry Mem Medal is given once a year to the best children's book of the year. And yes, he's won it. All right, let's take a look over here at books and stuff. Let's just look at the covers of some of the, these books. We don't have them all in the library, but I'm working on it. All right. So if, you, so if you just scroll down. See, sometimes it's fun just to look around. I know we have a lot of these books. It's fun to just you know, look around and see what's on the website there. So that's Kwame Alexander. You might want to look at another time. Now here's Pam Ryan. And you might say, Miss Techroth, I don't know her. Yes, you do. She's coming out with a new book. I haven't seen this one yet. Of course, bookstores are closed, so we can't go take a look. But I bet you, you older students recognize this one. I know we have some of these books in here in the library, in here in the library. And then whenever we scroll down more, we see further, we see other books that I know we have in the library. Whoops. Oh, Miss Techroth, you're doing it again. Becoming Naomi Leon. You know, I like to look at these sites because I know we have a lot of these books here. But then when I got down here, I had no idea that she had these books. Aren't they fun? Tony Baloney. So I'm going to have to look for Tony Baloney books for some of our younger readers. So you might want to check out her website. All right. I know you know this one. Those of you who like the Dork Diaries, there's the author there. Okay. And then the one who wrote the Babysitter series, Rick Roardan, yes, you know him, Lightning Thief, and all those great mythology books. Again, some I love the pictures on some of these things. So even though it's an advertisement for book sales, I still love the pictures. All right, and the last one down here, the Serafina books. All right, these are the hills of North Carolina. This is out over there. Um, in um, Asheville, where he lives, and of course, where the Serafina books, <clears throat> excuse me, take place. You might want to read about him. He um, was a very successful businessman. He started a, a tech company, made a lot, 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 lot of money, decided he wanted to be a writer. And so now he and his wife and his three daughters, that's what they do. They do lots of other things too, but you might be interested in reading about him, here's his daughters, about a company that they started because they were interested in robotics. So anyway, all right, so there we have the Merrick Moore um, 
Destiny homepage and some new things on there. I hope that you will take advantage of um, all the things that are out there on the internet for free, but you know that I hope that you come back to this site because there are lots of cool things on here too. So with that, we'll call an end to this. And until I see you or talk to you next time, you take care of yourself and stay safe. Good night. Oh, good night. <laughs>